Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. I hope all of you that celebrate the 4th of July enjoyed a happy and safe holiday. Before we get into today's tutorial, I wanted to share a quick update on our 12 days of Christmas in July series. And we're gonna start that series on our usual post day next week. So that's Wednesday the 13th at 7 p.m. and we'll continue for the next 12 days. I'm also sharing daily crafty inspiration on Instagram that started back on July 1st, and I'm hopefully gonna get through the entire month. So you should check that out for projects that don't get shared here on YouTube, as well as the tutorials we have during the series. If you are not following me on Instagram, I'll drop a link in the description below so you can find me there. I've got my intro almost complete. I've got the images and the music all set, but I think it would be way more funner if Tech Hubby added some snow animation. So I need all of you to help me out by dropping a hashtag Tech Hubby Let It Snow down in the comments. I'll make sure he sees all of those comments and hopefully that will encourage him to work on that intro for our series. So the request that we get most frequently during the series is about how to make and arrange the flowers. And we have such a limited amount of time when we post those project tutorials, it's hard to work in the flowers as well. So I thought it would be a great time now to cover that today and I will be helping myself out by creating a few of the arrangements I can use during the series. And if you're interested in that, then you can stick with me and we'll make it together. So it would really be very impossible for me to bring down all of the flower dyes that I use for my projects. It would just really take all day. I think it would be better for us to focus today on the ones that I will be featuring more frequently during the series. And of course, I use these all year round. So they're not just necessarily holiday or Christmas flowers, but they will be used most during our series. Now, I just got them on this magnet board. I took them out of their packaging because I just don't have room for that in my little craft room, but I will share with you that all of the dies that I'm using today are going to be linked in the description. So if you're interested in them, you can find them online and I will mostly be using my cinch and go poinsettia this is a spellbinders die and also these over here are my newest die set from spellbinders these are the be bold blooms and i don't know that i would have um, automatically assumed they were for christmas but they work really well and so i'm going to be using a combination of these we'll make two arrangements today but i'll share another couple of techniques that i find very helpful when making flowers for holiday projects and then of course we do need to have some foliage so I brought down these. Now, typically I use some holly um, and I received the ones that I used as part of compensation for design team work when I worked for Cherryland Design. And so they are now owned by Makers Movement and that particular set is not available. But I did find quite a few holly dyes from places like Simon Says Stamp and even Amazon. So you might wanna check those out as well. But for today's projects, I'm gonna use a couple of sets here. This one has been one of my favorite. I picked this up last year. It is the Cartabella Garden Branch. And I checked that out on scrapbook.com today and saw that it was on sale. Uh, it is regularly $15 and it was $9.79. So that may be worth checking out because you'll at least save enough for your shipping. And then this is a Sunny Studio Winter Greenery Snippet Set. And that was also from scrapbook.com. So if you're gonna go over there, you might wanna check this out too. They've got holly and then some branchy bits. And these are fun add-ons. So you could cut them maybe with a mirror cardstock or just a glitter card stack, and that would add a lot of detail to your arrangement. So I'm gonna be using both of these as well. And then a couple more of my go-to dies. The, uh, they came from Gina Marie Designs, and they are the Pine Needle Sprig. 
there's two sizes in here. And then the pine cone set as well, there's two sizes and these are a layered die. So that's kind of nice that you can customize how you create that. So these are what I'm gonna be working with today. I'll also be using some of my go-to staples that I use every day in my flower creating and I just keep them handy on my desk. I'm gonna work on this mat that I've created just by cutting a Dollar Tree placemat up. I find that these are very easy to clean. I just wipe them down with some uh, hand sanitizer so the ink comes off, the adhesive comes off, and I can use this as a safe glue surface as well. So if I'm hot gluing things, then I can protect my table. For the projects today, I have two different arrangements and they're both going to feature that Cinch and Go Point set yet. So I thought I would just show you very quickly if you have not seen the set yet. It just has a very pretty five point petal. And so it is also scored and it shows a lot of detail. I typically fold mine rather than shaping them with the shaping tool. I just really like the look of it. And I think it also helps to create less bulkiness in the flower. So I'll do that for both of these portions and then I will adhere them together. So what I want to reach for is my Tombow and I'm just going to use a very small amount on the back so that I can adhere those together. And you'll just offset your flower petals so that you get a nice full look. It's easy to line that up because there is a hole right in the center. So I'm gonna move on to one that I have already completed here so that I can use my punch. This is my uh, crocodile. It is definitely seen better days. And I'm gonna pick the side that has the smaller hole. The uh, hole that is there now is not quite large enough to put stamens in. And so I need to just make that a little bit bigger. And so there's a couple of different options for this. You can pick gold or white or even the coffee color. Just depends on the project that you're working with. I would recommend if you pick these gold stamens, they're a little bit larger. So I would say that probably five would be the right amount. If you pick the different colors, I would stick with uh, six just so that it looks nice and full but since these take up more room so I just folded that in half as a group all together and then I can feed that right through that hole there and so the stems come out on the back so what you want to do is just flip that over and go ahead and clip those loops apart so that you can spread them out and keep them more flat on the back of your flower. And it's also a good idea to keep a little scrap paper handy so that you can cut off a bit. So what I wanna do is pull these apart and hold them in place while I add just a little bit of hot glue there. And then I'll just press that in and that will secure your double headed stamens on the back. Then you can come in and just remove that excess so that you get a nicer, tidier arrangement. And this will also help it to be a little bit less bulky. So just go ahead and clean that up on the back. And that is one option. So of course you could use the white stamens as well and get kind of a different look. For the arrangement I'm making today, I already have the project mostly finished, and I did uh, decide that it was really gonna be very bulky already. It has a lot of layers and it's quite thick. You could probably guess what it's going to be because you all know how I am, but I wanted to create these sort of similar flowers, um, but have them be a little bit less bulky on the top. So I've got the same two uh, dies here cut with the same cardstock. Here's the one that I glued together so we can keep working with that. This is one of the centers from the Be Bold Blooms and so this would have worked for that larger flower. I want to use that 
in the center of this so that I don't have that dimensional stamen. I did find that I like to just go ahead and punch a little piece of that cardstock color and add it right to the bottom. That way you don't see that hole through the cutout of that die cut. So let's just go ahead and add that here. Now I want to top that off with the glitter center. I'm just tapping that around. I'm not using a lot of glue on this because I don't want it to splooge out between those holes. And I'll just go ahead and add that to the center. So this glue obviously is going to dry back to clear so you're not going to see that and that will be a nice center for my flower. I've got a couple of them prepared here and because I want to put two arrangements on my project I think it will help to create a nice balance if I work a arrangement in each of the corners. So I made one that is obviously a little bit bigger and that way I can make a larger arrangement on the bottom and the smaller one on the top and that just kind of works together to create a balance in. So I picked the same center for this one, but this one I picked the smaller size just because it was a better scale. In that Be Bold Blooms die set, there are a couple of flower choices. This is the smaller one and I have cut two for each flower and then I arranged them just as I did the poinsettia so that I got a nice layering of those petals. I finished it off with some of those glittery centers as well and so I have two for the bottom layer and then one for the top. So because I wanted you guys to see the foliage that you could actually click on and get, um, I chose to continue to work with the Be Bold Bloom uh, foliage here. And so I have created three sets of two. I offset them just slightly so that they looked a little more full and I hot glued those together to prepare for creating the arrangement. You could easily use your Distress Ink in this time to add a little bit of depth so you can see I just ran it a little bit on the bottom and so that would be a little bit darker but that is totally up to you it does not need to be done I will be adding a little bit of uh, texture and filler as well I'm gonna bring in some tool this is from the Dollar Tree you can also find this on Amazon pretty easily and I'm just going to stick with silver for today and this is a pretty good size roll I think it's about six inches high I'm just gonna cut off like a little sliver of this so that I can work on adding that filler and then I'll cut it into three pieces so that I can have one for each of the sets of leaves and I'll pinch these together just by flipping those corners you see it's it was square but I'm bringing the corner to the middle rather than the opposite corner and that way when I bring the sides in I won't get a block of that tool at the end it will be more of the tips and so that will be nice and full but not too much at the outside so this is the time where you want to go ahead and add that to your leaves and because I am fairly tolerant of the heat I can do this without gloves but if you need those you should definitely consider getting those silicone fingertips so that you don't burn yourself. But see how I'm just going to secure that bunch right at the bottom of the leaves so that we can hide this portion as we uh, build up our arrangement. Let's do that two more times. And so each of these sets of leaves will have that filler. You could easily use the uh, tool that comes out during whatever holiday they tend to coordinate. So you could use black or orange and definitely get a very coordinated look with your project. So I would recommend just grabbing those when you see them and having all of the different color options. 
So here's the last one. I'll continue to use that same technique of squishing up the tool. And then secure that. You see how when I pulled that up off the mat, it definitely did not stick. This is a very good surface to hot glue on, and that will save your work surface too from getting hot glue on it. So the next thing I wanna do is add my loopy twine bows. I find it much easier to go ahead and pinch those first before adding them or gluing them, and that will help you to position those loops where you want them. So I just want to have that basically right where the tool started. And this is going to be a nice added extra texture and filler. You can come back in and cut off the excess. Let's just go ahead and finish off the second and third set. So these will peel up easily off of that mat. Then we can assemble the arrangements. For the left hand bottom, I'm going to have three flowers. So I'll just add a little bit of glue and secure this close to the outside of that uh, center area so that I get a nice amount of that layering flower. So I always build my arrangements off project. And I just find that is much easier to get all of the bits where you want them without having to take them up and rearrange them. And so here is the smaller layering flowers and I'll just attach the leaf and twine just the same way. So I'm adding this from front to back. I want to shape this one over here a little bit so that I can create a nice curve. So you could imagine this would be at the bottom and then I will do the same process for the smaller one, but we're only gonna add one of the layering flowers and one of our leaf sets. This is in more of a curve as well. So now you can imagine how nice that would work to frame out a focal image and create a nice balance. So this has been created with scraps as well. So that will definitely help to kind of extend your crafty budget because you can make your flowers out of offcuts. And I do appreciate not wasting paper. So this is my first set. Um, you could also create these with the stamens and have that dimension if you wanted, if that worked for your project. Before we move on to the next arrangement, I did want to also share how to get a frosty look for the tips of these poinsettias. I have already finished this one, but you can see that the pink flower is created the same way I did the red ones. These do have stamens in them and I picked that white uh, color. So I chose to put six in and that gives me a nice full center. This one is already dried, but I did wanna show you how I put that kind of frosty appearance on there. This is Aileen's Glitter Snow Weather Resistant Formula. I don't think that matters for your cards because you're not gonna take them outside. Uh, but this is just basically looks like frosting and I have an old Finnebar brush, Finnebar? I don't know how you say that. Anyway, I just take that and get a little bit of that product on my brush and then I work around the tips of that, just adding a little bit. It will take a couple of tries to work it in as well as I want and distribute it so that it looks natural and also helps when you get going along if you tamp it in with your finger once it's set up just a bit and that will give it a more kind of a natural looking edge instead of just applied with a brush. So I would go all the way around and you definitely want to do that when you have it already assembled because at, because if you were to kind of work your crocodile or your hole punch down over that, it could cause it to get damaged. And that looks nice as it is, but I think an additional layer of detail is also good. So I'll typically come back in with a crystal stickle. You could use just a regular glue and glitter if you like that, but I like the stickle because it makes less mess. And so I'm just gonna go 
right over exactly the layer of that faux snow, the glitter snow. And then it makes it nice and frosty and glittery looking. You have to wait between those two steps. So you'll put your snow on and then let it dry completely before you come back with your glitter so that they don't kind of merge together. I have done that in the past and you really lose the glitter into the snow. So make sure that you wait for that step. And then once that's dry, you could use it the same as you did with your other poinsettias. And that creates more of a frosty look. This is also very beautiful on like a blue poinsettia. If you're doing a blue Christmas theme, I think that looks really pretty. So that's just sort of the same flower, but with a different finishing effect. And so that makes it very versatile. And once again, doesn't have to be for Christmas. If you were making for Halloween, I would put a little bit of black on there or a little bit of uh, black stickle or orange stickle and that would be really fun. So another thing I like to do with those cinch and go poinsettias is cut them from a glitter paper. This is a very sturdy glitter paper, not like the Dollar Tree kind where it kind of comes apart. This is a good thick uh, nice glitter paper. I really like this blue. I use it often. I'll do the same pinch. <clears throat> I'll do <clears throat> I'll do the same pinch on those leaves. You definitely don't want to try shaping these with your shaping tool because it kind of burnishes it in and changes the appearance of the surface. Kind of makes it more dull in areas. And this is once again just going to create a little bit of depth without a lot of bulk. The next step you would do for the smaller flowers is glue them together. But because this is a really big uh, flower shape, I have trouble getting to the center of it when I have to work through both of those layers. So I'll go ahead and punch the hole for the center now before I attach them. And that way I will be able to work my stamens through there once they're attached. So for the glitter flowers, you uh, would not have a lot of success if you just use your Tombow. So I'm gonna use my hot glue again. That will really work down through that texture of the glitter and help it to be well adhered. So find your center and then go ahead and put a little pressure while that glue sets up. So I really like those white stamens again for this, but I also think a uh, coffee color would look beautiful as well. So let's pull out six of these white stamens and I'll fold those just the way I did for the first flower that we created. And I'll work that down through the center. Then grab that scrap paper again and cut yourself a little square and clip apart those twine and secure that right on the back. So this is gonna be our largest focal flower and I want to balance that with two smaller flowers. So this is the Cinch and Go poinsettia again, but I just chose the smaller size. I cut them with flat white paper because that glitter paper really is supposed to be the focal point here in this arrangement. And you can see that I have attached it so that the petal from the larger flower hides the center from the smaller one because we don't really need to put centers in flowers if we're going to cover them up. That will help to uh, create less bulk and also save a little bit of our supplies. So this is going to be a single arrangement that's a little bit larger. And so I have cut a couple of pieces of that pine branch and then a couple of pieces from the garden branch. This one was a layered die and I just went ahead and cut the back portions out with a lighter green and then used the darker green as sort of the stems. For assembling these, I would recommend picking up the Zig two-way glue pen so you're not like 
writing with it, you're just dabbing, dab, 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 and then flip it over. And that way you're not getting a big old pile of glue mess all over. I would recommend this for the poinsettias as well so that, you know, you can keep them looking nice on the top. I definitely use this pretty much every day uh, for flower arrangement, but especially during the holidays. So that is worth picking up. And so what I want to do is create my arrangement here kind of a natural, well, of course, flowers are natural, but I want to think about where all of these petals are landing so that I can get all of those pretty details. So I might have to flip one of these over, and this is just a nice heavy cardstock that's a solid core, so it's not going to show anything on the back, and this will help to fill in. I'm pre-arranging these so I know where to add things as I work along. So I've got four of these pine cones created, and I just used a gold cardstock, more of a bronze color in the back. And for the top layer, I used an offcut of a wood grain. That way I could get a little bit of a modeled look, and it will kind of have a little bit of depth. So I want to put two on either side. So now you see I have to continue to move out those other branchy bits just so that I can have everything distributed evenly and everything shows. So let's go ahead and do that as well. So I will assemble those just as I did the first arrangement with that tool. And I've got a couple of loopy bows as well. So I'm going to start by attaching my pine cones together because I know that this is the shape I want them to have. So I want them to stay attached this way. You could also use a foam spacer here to build a little dimension if you wanted to do that. So the next thing I want to do is add these two components together. And I'll just sneak a little bit of that glue behind. I'm going to position the tool behind the pine cones because I don't want to hide too much of that detail. And then I will add my loopy twine bows and then attach my flower onto that. And I'll do the same for this side as well. Now I'll bring this second leaf arrangement to the flowers and that creates a very nice generous size arrangement. So this is all for the arrangements I've created to use in some of my projects for next week for the series starting on Wednesday. I hope that you plan to join me for that. You can find links for all this product in the description below as well as links for all our social media sites. If you are not already, I would love for you to subscribe and join our crafty little family. And as always, I'm wishing you a happy and productive day, and I thank you so much for watching. Bye.